welcome back to a brand new video. Today, I'm gonna be taking you guys along my, taking you, ha, <laughs> I just butchered that. I'm going to bring you along on my day, sharing with you some stuff around the house. I'm gonna be hanging the mirrors today, attempting to hang them by myself, we shall see. <laughs> I did get my laser level out, and I'm gonna do the best I can, but my husband did say, that he'll help me when he gets home. I'm just so impatient, I can't wait. So I might just try to do it. Also, I got the epoxy in to do the countertop, um, but I have to run to the store to get a new roller and I need to get um, some more plastic to go around because the old plastic just got really messed up. So that's gonna have to wait for a few hours or maybe like later on this afternoon I'll do that. Oh, I can't wait for help. <laughs> I'm gonna at least try. So I'll get like everything marked and level. There are spots here or here. I think it's gonna be much easier to hang them from at the top than on each side. So, that's what I'm gonna do. Is I'm gonna get my laser level out, put it on the wall, and I'm gonna do a masking tape all the way across. That way, it's the masking tape will be level, and we can just kind of We'll figure it out. <laughs> we shall figure it out. So that would be safe. Don't you move. Okay. So the first, or the mirror in the center, wait. <laughs> The mirror in the center is centered, is what I was gonna say, and I guess that just sounds like a lot of centers. But, it is centered, so. I don't know, I'm not loving this idea. Why am I second guessing this? Are you listening to me? <laughs> I don't know, I'm just gonna try it. So, got the laser level right here. This is a Craftsman, by the way. This thing is awesome. If you don't have one of these, you sh really should get one. I think it was like 20 bucks, um, but it has like a little tack here. You stick it in the wall and then you turn her on and it gives a line on the wall, it's pretty cool. But be careful so you don't poke yourself. You know, obviously we don't want them awkward to try, but we also don't want them.
All right, y'all, so I've hit a slight dilemma in the plans. I'm gonna be real with you guys. I don't love the way the mirrors look from certain angles in the house. And I think the reason why is because like, we have so many windows in our home. Like this is a small house and we got like the big sliding glass window. We have the window in the kitchen. We have two big windows here, the door with the window. And there's a lot of natural light already coming in. We really don't need to accentuate the natural light. But when you have the mirrors on the wall, when you're standing in the kitchen looking towards the dining room, it is way too much. There's too much going on in that space. It's the, the idea is good to have the mirrors to like open it up even more, but with all the light bouncing off of it, it's almost like too much visually. So I'm going to scratch this project at the moment. Although the mirrors are pretty, they just weren't exactly what I was hoping for, so I went ahead and removed them and put those in my office. And now I'm gonna go ahead and patch this hole that's right in our kitchen. So this is the wall right next to the refrigerator. Um, this actually used to be a pony wall, I think is what it's called. It was like a countertop when we first moved in the house, and we did remove it because it just didn't make sense. It was too tall, and then the refrigerator door always hit it. Um, and we removed it and then we were left with a hole in the wall. But then I covered it with brick paneling so then it was kind of hidden for so long. I pulled the brick paneling down and now it's time to patch this up so that way it's not an eyesore. I did pick up this little piece of drywall from Lowe's. It was about $6 and here I'm just marking with the pen where I need to cut it. I will be using a razor knife to do this. It's actually really easy to cut drywall. Um, I think I was a little intimidated <laughs> at first because it seems like such a daunting process, but truly patching this hole really wasn't too bad. I think the hardest part is really just making it smooth, but actually putting the drywall in place isn't too bad. So I just used the pen and I kind of just lined it up and marked. And then I'm going to lay it on the floor and just make a straight line and use the razor knife to cut it down. And then you just kind of pop it and it breaks right where you need it to. Once I get the drywall piece cut, I do just kind of hold it up in place, make sure that it fits. If it doesn't, I just take the razor knife and kind of just scrape off whatever areas need to be scraped off so that way it will fit. Um, and then I did go in with some screws to hold it in place. Oh, look at me. I think it's gonna work. Okay, so there's that. We're gonna go ahead and get that piece in there first, I think. So, we have a few nails sticking out. You're gonna wanna make sure to either Pull them out like this. Um, like so. Okay. And this will just wedge right up in there. So right here, um, it was kind of a tight fit, so I just took the edge of the tape and used it as a flat edge to kind of hammer the drywall into place. You don't want to obviously hammer onto the drywall because it's going to put dents in it, so you want to make sure you're using something flat. So I just grabbed whatever was closest to me and it worked well. So now moving on to the last little piece, I am going to do the exact same thing that I did for the top piece, do that for the bottom, and then we're going to start filling the holes and using the tape. Um, so once again, just marking it here, taking the razor knife to make all the cuts. Um, I messed up a little bit. <laughs> I kind of damaged the drywall, but it's totally fine. You can't even tell. Whoops, I broke the whole thing. <sighs>
So I bought this whole little kit of drywall mud at Lowe's. It was about $6. It came with a scraper, which I thought was a great deal. So I went ahead and grabbed this, and now I'm just going in with the mud to fill all the big holes and to cover the screw holes as well. And then I will be using the drywall tape over top of that, so that way the tape has something, something to stick to, um, and then it'll give it like a smooth finish. And then you're gonna go over top of that tape with the mud as well. Um, and here I did notice that one of my screws was sticking out. You wanna make sure that you sink these in, that way you don't see the screws poking through. Small. Make it, um, what are you trying to do? Like make it, um, smooth again? Smoother? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I can tell it's not smooth. <laughs> well, it will be. There was a hole here, remember? Uh huh. Yeah. Well, I got a big, big hole. Not for long. Nope. Today. Okay, look, it ain't perfect. But it's good. But the hole's filled. <laughs> Got the hole patched on the drywall. Um, so that feels really good because that has been a project I have put off and put off for so long. And it's always the small little projects that I don't enjoy doing. Like, you know, I like doing projects that when you see like a big difference. And while this is a big difference, it's just, it's a small project, you know? So a lot of times I will jump from thing to thing and then have all these little projects to tackle around the house, like unfinished things. So that was one of them that needed to be fixed. I also need to quickly fix my cabinet door. So I'll share that with you guys. If you ever have like loose cabinet doors, y'all, you don't need no help. Let me show you how to fix it. I have a cabinet door that's like a little wonky because my kids like to lean on it. Um, and like eventually the screw loosens. So I'll show you how to fix those if you ever have like a loose cabinet, super simple. All right, so y'all see this cabinet door right here? It's a little wonky, so I'm going to fix it. In here, um, you can see that the hinge is just a little loose. All it needs to do is be tightened. You can take a drill or a screwdriver to do this, um, but it's really easy. And voila! Yes. We'll be soup safe. <laughs> I said soup. I said soup. Ooh. I meant to say super safe. I said soup. Um, I would be. I, mean, I would be kind of safe. <laughs> now that the mirrors didn't work out i wanted to remove all the screws that i just put in this wall <laughs> um i actually use drywall anchors as well so i'll have to patch pretty big holes um later but for now i'm just taking the screws out just so they weren't super noticeable
I'm going to take some of this antiquing glaze and I'm gonna darken up the wood in here on the kitchen just a little. Um, so I'm just gonna kind of buff this in. There's some areas where I feel like it's kind of faded. And so I just wanna darken that up. While I was on a roll, I went ahead and did a few touch-ups on the barn door. Um, a while back, I stained this and then I went in with a few touch-ups and it kind of just made weird marks on the barn door. So I'm just gonna fix a few of those areas up. And then one thing led to another and then I was touching up the kitchen table. Um, I bought my kitchen table used and um, the previous owners had a cat and she kind of like used her claws to like claw at the table. So I just filled it with some of this antique glaze for now until I have time to do a full makeover on the table. A couple days later, I was cleaning up my house and I had this creative urge to redo this cabinet. Um, so I was actually rearranging the house a little bit after putting the mirrors in my office and realized that the cabinet just didn't work in there anymore with all the mirrors. So then I was like, well, you know what? Let me pull it back out to the dining room and see if I can do a quick refresh on it to make it work. Um, so just so you guys know, I am on the hunt for a long buffet cabinet, something that's thin so it doesn't take up a whole lot of the dining room, but that has storage for things like arts and crafts because we don't really have any space for that in our home. Um, we don't have like a utility closet or anything. So I really need a cabinet like this for those things. And that's actually where we keep all of our arts and crafts and like my paperwork. So I decided to try it out here again and I started off by taking that antique glaze all over the paint since it was a flat finish and it was making it a beautiful color but still the wood on the front, the little herringbone design that I did, was really dating the piece overall. I just didn't love the look anymore. I think when I originally did it, it was like a cool idea, but just it doesn't last long term. So I was like, you know what, what can I do to just quickly fix this? And my initial idea was just go with black, paint the whole thing black, change the hardware to gold, and leave the top like that stained color and just see how that looks. So that's what I'm going to do. I went out to my little storage shed where I have all my leftover paint and I had some black paint left over from the built-ins in the living room and I just went to town painting it. I did two coats of black paint and then like I said I did paint the hardware to a gold color. That way it just played nicely off of the um, fixture that's in the dining room and I think it turned out pretty nice. I actually love the way it looks. Now I will say it's not the exact size or shape that I want long term so I'm still going to be on the hunt for something but in the meantime this works. It still allows us to have the storage that we need um, and it looks a lot more like updated and goes better with the style that I'm leaning towards.
once I got all the go the <laughs> once I got all the gold hardware on and the little hinges painted a little bit with the gold I'm gonna go ahead and decorate the space. I did pull this picture out of my master bathroom just because I really didn't have anything large scale for the space at the moment. So this is just gonna have to work for now. Um, just bear with me. I'm trying to like slowly but surely gather things up, um, but I like it. I just feel like it would be, how beautiful would that picture be with a larger frame? So I might just build one myself. Um, and then I just grabbed some things from around the house to just decorate it for now, just to fill the space so it wasn't just so plain Jane. Um, the original idea was to do a gallery wall here, but I don't have enough frames. So like I said, for now I'm just kind of utilizing what I have around the house to make it work. So that way it looks a little bit more finished and not so blah. ago I decided to do a DIY project on my kitchen island so I took some all-purpose stucco and I applied it all over the top of the kitchen island and then I sealed it using epoxy my husband and I did this for the first time together and it definitely has been quite a project so let me go ahead and share with you where we're at now okay y'all so this is my epoxied countertops currently i haven't wiped them down they're a little dirty um so don't mind that but i wanted to show you what they're looking like currently with just two coats of epoxy so first thing we did was i used the stucco and i did like this really cool like texture all over the countertop sealed with our first coat of epoxy let that fully cure and then did a second coat there was a few areas of imperfections right here we had a pretty decent sized bubble as you can see and i could never fix it unfortunately it's gonna have to stay because i'm not redoing the whole countertop for that one little spot so oh well <laughs> but um anyway it looks really great we do have some bubbles um here like drips i guess you would say not bubbles so all those have to be scraped off and then sanded down. But at the moment, the countertop actually looks great. We love the way it looks. We love the color. So now my plan is to just do my final coat of epoxy to really just smooth out any little imperfections we have, like this one little dip right here. So I'm taking the sandpaper. I'm gonna go around and just sand with a light sand, nothing crazy. I'm not kicking up a bunch of dust. I'm actually just scratching the surface just so that way it gives the epoxy something to adhere to for the final coat. Um, and I'm gonna work on that today. And then the countertops will be done and I'll be able to show you guys a final review. All right, so here I'm just taking that sanding block and scratching up the surface. I'm not really sanding sanding because I didn't wanna kick up a lot of dust. And from the research I did, the purpose of this is just to rough it up just enough to give the epoxy something to adhere to. Um, so there was a few areas that I did have to sand down a little bit more that had some like bubbles that popped up. Um, but other than that, this is pretty much all I did before we did our final coat. However, the day that I was planning on doing the epoxy, we had some stuff come up with our family, so we actually did not get a chance to pour it this day. So a couple days later is when we actually started it, and you'll notice just outfit changes, so that's why I wanted to mention that. Um, so my husband does mix the epoxy for me. I don't know why, but this part is super intimidating to me, but it's really not even hard. I just... I don't like touching it. <laughs> so um, basically it's equal parts. At least that's the epoxy that we chose to use. I will have this product linked below. You just want to make sure you follow directions, you know, according to the epoxy you're using. Um, and so we're mixing it the way it tells you to mix it. You're going to pour it into a container and slowly stir it. Now we are adding a tint to ours. And this is something that helped because originally when we did our countertops and we poured the epoxy over the paint color that I chose, it actually changed the color of the countertop. So I'm going in with this white pigment. This is extremely, extremely pigmented. So you only need a little bit. Um, and we just kind of watch. I, I can't really give you a measurement because I just literally pour it in there until I like the color. And that is how we tinted our epoxy to kind of tone down the brown tones that happened originally. 
and if you want to see what I'm talking about, um, I'll have the video linked down below where I originally did the countertop so you can see what I'm talking about. Once again, here we're just following the directions that the packaging came with to make sure that we had like no bubbles or any imperfections with the epoxy. And it does say to let this sit for a couple minutes and then to pop any bubbles that are in the cup with the heat gun before you pour it. This is self-leveling epoxy, by the way. So all you really got to do is just smooth it out across the surface and it does the rest for you, which is actually really nice. This epoxy is very user-friendly. Really? Yeah, I think, um, yeah. <laughs> okay. I get so I'm really happy with it. I think it turned out really nice. Mm -hmm. It was a f project for sure, but. And then I, did you even notice, baby? Mm -hmm. I stained the thing. The wood. Mm -hmm. Looks a lot better, don't it? Mm -hmm. Like darker so it matches with all the wood. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's go fishing while this dries. <laughs> Okay, this final coat looks great. I've made like a barrier out of laundry baskets and chairs. <laughs> Just so that way it can do its thing while we're gone. Um, we're actually gonna go head out and go fishing for a little bit. baby he's just a big dog he's a great dane he's gonna be huge Y'all, these countertops are gonna be the end of us. <laughs> Do y'all see all the little like specks and bubbles? I don't know if you'll be able to see because the glare, but 
it is not a glass finish anymore. See like right here, it's completely speckled. And this time we did use a little bit more of um, the epoxy like pigment. So that could be what happened. Uh, we just don't know. So we're gonna do another coat once this is fully dry. Um, but this sucks. Hey y'all, so it is the next morning. I wanna give you a quick rundown on all the projects I've been working on. So, some of them are great, some of them are going great, some of them are not so great. <laughs> so let's start with the countertops because this is like a big project that has just turned into a, kind of like a nightmare situation. Um, not a nightmare, that's a little dramatic. But my point is, it's just not working out. Um, we have done four coats now, uh, four, three. One, two, three, yeah, three coats of epoxy. Um, and this third coat was supposed to be the final coat. And it looked absolutely beautiful this morning, or yesterday morning when we did it. Then we decided to go fishing, just kind of get out of the house while it was curing, make sure there's no one running around getting like dust kicked up and stuff, which was a good move, other than the fact that a fly embedded into the epoxy, which really upset me. <laughs> I had to like pick it out with tweezers and then melt, or like heat up the epoxy with the heat gun to kind of like smooth it out again. That was a pain in the butt, but I, I fixed it. Um, and everything was looking wonderful up until about six, seven o'clock last night. We got crazy rain. It was a bad thunderstorm last night. And we were kind of going in and out of the house before the storm hit because I was, I had just got new trees for the backyard. I got a, um, a grapefruit tree, an orange tree, and then I got a crepe myrtle tree. And I was going in and out like cooking dinner and stuff. And I think the moisture in the air from the storm rolling in caused these little tiny white specks all over the epoxy and from the research i've done it basically says that when you're working with epoxy you want dry conditions no humidity it's florida <laughs> it is hot and humid here all summer long especially when it starts raining you can like feel the difference in the air and i think that's what happened so that's a bummer next time we do the epoxy we will most definitely do it on a day when it's not supposed to rain and it's supposed to be more dry um, so for now, the countertops are staying as is with the little white specks all in them. There's nothing I can do. Um, I do have to go around and knock off all these little like drips here. They're just solid. I'm just gonna take my little like grinder and just cut them all off and then the countertop will be good for a while. Um, my wall over here that I patched, that is dry. I need to do another coat on it. Let that dry. It's gonna take a few coats before I get it right because the wall itself was already so messed up and like wavy. So I'm gonna do another coat of the um, drywall mud and then hopefully when I do that next coat, then I can sand it down and get that nice smooth finish. Also, are y'all okay? Clearly they're okay. They're being goofy. Um, the hardware that I bought for the kitchen. <laughs> I cannot, I'm like, this has been a project. So the hardware I ordered after measuring, it's still wrong. It is still wrong. So I'm returning that hardware and I'm most likely just gonna take these down and just utilize these because why waste them? And I, I'm just gonna spray paint them myself with a, um, champagne bronze gold color to get the gold that i want and it'll be fine and i honestly love like a worn out look so if it does wear a little bit on the handles that we use all the time i'm okay with that um i think it just kind of adds you know a little bit of charm and character to the space so yeah i'm gonna utilize the hardware that i kept though originally for the kitchen island and just use those because i accidentally broke a few of these when i was taking them off but like I said, all the ones that are in here currently, I'm just gonna use those and find a good spray paint. So I'm on the hunt for a good champagne bronze color that looks like authentic and doesn't look like cheap gold. So I'm, I'll be hunting for one of those and I'll share that with you guys when I do that. That it will be a project for sure because this hardware, when we installed it, some of them were not like perfectly level. So some of these are gonna be hard to get off. So we'll see when that project gets here.
drops again, I bet you're gonna lose your mind. <laughs> I had the drill going the wrong way. Um. <laughs> it's taking you one, one minute and nine seconds. All right, y'all, so it's been a couple hours. I got all the little bubbles scraped off along the edge. I just took a really sharp knife. Um, I started off with a butter knife, but I felt like a like actual knife worked better. And I just hammered the little specks off and they all popped off just fine. Um, but it looked really good. And then I took like a little sanding block and I wrapped it around, like I wrapped a wet towel around my hand and then I sanded. That way I didn't get like dust everywhere. So it really worked and it turned out great. So, got the hardware on. Look how pretty. You guys, I love it. Absolutely love it. I love the color. I love the color of the countertop. I love the hardware. It's exactly what I had in mind, but even better. Um, obviously, there were a few flaws with the countertops having some moisture issues, but you know, you live and learn. And now we know <laughs> not to do epoxy countertops when it's supposed to rain. But overall, I think it turned out pretty darn good and um, we're happy with it. So that's all that really matters. But let me go ahead and share with you an overview of how everything turned out. Here's a throwback to the kitchen island top before I even got started. So if you happen to miss any of the videos, I'll have them all linked below and I may even do a full recap from start to finish all in one video. Um, but here's an up close of how it looked. As you could see, it was a DIY wood butcher's block and it definitely was showing some major wear and tear. Um, but with a few weeks of really hard work and lots of patience, this is where we're at now. Now that I've shared with you the countertops, I did want to go ahead and show you my little uh, drywall patch over here. <laughs> okay, y'all don't mind the mirror. Um, we were just using it this morning to get ready, but here is where I patched that hole. It's not perfect yet. Um, there's still a lot of work that needs to be done. I've been doing multiple layers to kind of get as smooth as a finish as I can, and then I'll go in with some sandpaper, smooth it out, do a last final coat, and try to get like this texture here down here but it's looking good um i think i did a pretty good job so far for not being a drywall person what do you think <laughs> she's so cute give me this. this toy smells awful just so you know it's awful but over here i did paint the stand it looks a lot more updated now um it's not ideal i do want like a long uh, like buffet here and I would love something that's like wood tone very natural like antique looking But to save money. I'm using what I have and this works for now um, And I really love the little setup here. I do want to do a few family photos on this wall um, This chair will not stay here It's just there temporarily because we have a bunch of cords hidden this outlet doesn't work So we have an extension cord running and then all of, everything is piled up in a basket um, but my husband's going to help me with that sometime this summer. We're going to run new wires and fix this outlet so we can put all of our, like, internet stuff in here instead. Or, like, in whatever cabinet um, I end up having there. So, that's that. Um, let's see. I do need some rugs, but right now we're in that phase of life where rugs just don't make sense for our family. So, we're just kind of going with the flow with that. Um, I did stain this wood around the window here. It's a lot darker now. It's still wood toned. I'm trying to get the lighting right for you guys. Let's see if you can see it. See? It still looks like a dark wood, but it's just a lot darker. Um, but obviously with it being backlit right now, it looks black. It's not black though. I do want to paint the white. 
of our window. I think it would look a lot better if it was painted black, but for now, that is how that looks. Um, and I do like it better being a little bit darker wood than like the cherry wood I had originally. So that looks better. This pot I actually got from a thrift store and I just did like a quick makeover on it. I used some of that antiquing wax <clears throat> all over it to kind of give it this like really natural look. And I love how that turned out. All these stems are from Ikea. Do y'all remember I paid like $12.99 a piece for these? <laughs> Um, when I thought they were $6.99, but they're actually $12.99. So they're so pretty though. They look real. But yeah, that's that. It's looking so good in here. I love it. I do think when I change all the hardware to gold, it's just going to make the kitchen pop. So I'm really excited about that. All right, you guys, that's actually gonna be it for today's video. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. Um, don't forget to subscribe if you are new. I will have more videos coming. And anytime I like tackle little home projects around the house, I will be filming. So you will see these just over the next couple weeks and months. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for being here and I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye y'all.